भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंधदा भगवती तेषिणी So, the last episode we were looking at how Gita is one of the masterpieces. Okay. So now these masterpieces has been so deeply studied by so many people. We have uh, our biggest commentators, or can say uh, biggest, one of the greatest commentators like Adi Shankar Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, Madhva Acharya. all in from dwaita philosophy advaita philosophy and vishishta advaita philosophy through in all these ways gita commentary has been written by these acharyas and then uh, the modern commentators like uh, uh, swami shivananda shri arabindo swami vivekananda have written vinoba bhave has written lokmanya tilak has written. so plenty many many people have gone through it and they have made it as part of their life bhagavad gita uh, application has been a part of their life in fact uh, mahatma gandhi used to uh, say it seems that bhagavad gita was a reference material for all his personal as well as national problems uh, he used to refer to uh, bhagavad gita in fact uh, einstein whom we are telling about you know one of the uh, theory of relativity uh, was uh, such a great scientist he was and uh, you know he once at later part of his life towards the end of his life he had visited india and uh, he saw the profound uh, the, the scriptural study uh, in india and then he says that you know i that he wasted his life trying to understand the laws of the world instead he says that you know he should have invested his life trying to find that which governs all these laws he was behind the laws but then the one who made it one who created it he wasn't able to study and that was his deepest biggest regret that he had towards the end of his life now uh tilak ji also writes about that the aim of the gita according to him is gnana moolaka bhakti pradhana karma yoga gnana moolaka so the gnana part is coming bhakti pradhana the bhakti yoga is coming karma yoga so all the three put together leads one to moksha leads one to liberation he said so like how uh, uh, even in the first episode we were talking about that you know like gita is a very practical text the how we understood okay uh, that you no know, gita is talking about how to live life how to get rid of sorrows what is the purpose isn't it so here we will see from the characters also so that we'll take the character arjuna who is the student here isn't it how we can identify arjuna in each one of us how can we relate to arjuna uh, the character arjuna here so see here uh, arjuna also goes very boldly to the battlefield it's it's not that he didn't come uh, unprepared he was very much prepared he came to the battlefield with great courage but then as soon as he saw his own people he felt dejected he gets dejected and even in bhagavad gita as and when you know krishna keeps talking about he when he narrates or when he this gives a discourse about bhagavad gita it's not that okay one shloka and arjuna understood everything it's not that he initially says yes 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 i understood now and then again he gets confused so it goes on between you know uh, understanding and confusion understanding and confusion this goes on for pretty long time uh, even in bhagavad gita to arjuna so now if you look at that can you relate it to uh, our own self we also get confused like this right sometimes we feel yeah 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 we have good clarity of our, of our life and then the next day we say 
oh no no this is a little confusing now so we 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 also like how arjuna was getting confused every now and then we also get confused every now and then in our lives isn't it whether it is our job whether it is a career whether it's personal relationships everything we are in a confusion so that is one next in fact uh, you know what we not only confuse ourselves we confuse others also right we want to we confuse our children we confuse others children also we confuse everybody okay with our confusion we also extrapolate it to everybody else also at some point right we we don't realize it you know we we so a lot of times we don't we give a lot of advices uh to people that okay you do this you do like this this is the best way that's the that's not the right way you know we keep telling that even without we experiencing that so you know we are also creating confusion to others yeah so now normally uh, in uh, if you look at you know why bhagavad gita is different is because the when you look at an upanishad any upanishad that we take uh, that there is also there the, you know there is a conversation between a guru and a shishya uh, okay so there so many characters who comes in different upanishads also there also the characters come in but what is different from the characters in upanishads and what is the difference in the characters in the uh, bhagavad gita is in upanishads the students who come there are already knowledgeable they are already in a, at a very high standard and so you know the kind of questions that they ask is very different from what arjuna asks to krishna okay so if you look at it uh, look take in uh, prashna upanishad prashna upanishad is full of questions and answers so there are six questions and then there is the answers given that's the whole content about prashna upanishad now here the students are asking maharshi pipalada the certain questions about you know about the existence about creation about the prana so they already know a lot of at least the basic things and all they already know and then they are asking questions if you look at kathopanishad in kathopanishad it is a conversation between an 8 year old boy okay not an 80 year old who has seen life and all that no an 8 year old boy but his questions are very very profound very very intense is an 8 year old boy nachiketa and the teacher is lord yama the god of death so he has a conversation between them so the the way nachiketa though he was such an is a is an 8 year old boy uh, the kind of uh, thing that he wanted to know you know he said that what is it that you know with which one is it? what is existing what is not existing i want to know that what is truly existing i want to know that so then you know in fact yama uh, tries to postpone that for a long time he says i'll give you a lot of things i will make you uh, live for many many years i will uh, uh, you know tell you i can uh, take you to heaven and uh, then you know you you can have all the riches all the luxuries Uh, you are not only you living for many many years uh, in fact your sons also your next generations also will be able to live for many years so he says he, he offers a lot of boon and nachiketa simply says you know you do one thing you keep all these things whatever you told me you're going to give me you know all that you keep it to yourself only i don't want it what i want to know is the ultimate truth you tell me that so that you know anybody else even we all forget about 8 year old children right even we if we say that you know instead of this knowledge i'll give you certain materialistic things and i think we'll definitely fall for it we'll say okay okay fine you know we'll take that but nachiketa 8 year old huh? not not like us is an 8 year old boy but in spite of it he just told so uh, he said no i don't want anything i only want to know the truth the ultimate truth i want to know god i want to know the brahman i want to know my own self who is there inside me what happens when i die where do i go i want to really know about all these things and finally yama had to give up and he, he had to uh, explain the true nature of brahman the true nature of nachiketa himself to him so that is how it was so the, the, so what i want to tell you is the students students were of a very high standard 
in all, the, all these Upanishads. But here, why we, are, we will be able to connect to Bhagavad Gita is because the student Arjuna is like us. He was also confused like us. He was also in crisis like us. That is why we will be able to relate to Arjuna's questions also according. Right? It's like uh, a first year, uh, in a first standard child uh, is sitting with a 10 standard uh, child. And, you know, obviously the questions what a 10 standard student will ask and the question what the first standard student will ask has a lot of difference, isn't it? So how will the first, first standard student understand the question and the answer of a 10 standard student? will not be able to. So similarly for us, we need to start from the basics to understand certain things and then when we study Upanishads, we will be able to relate to it much better. Okay. So the second thing why it is another practical thing is the whole discussion, the whole Bhagavad Gita is happening in a battlefield. Isn't it? So it's a, it's a crisis time. It's not a, you know, luxury, like sitting in a relaxed manner and asking, no. And uh, we can also relate to that because we are also in a state of crisis most of the time. Isn't it? Should we do this? Should we do that? You know, that, that kind of a crisis. Certain times we are like, we say, you know, project deadlines are happening. Now there's no time for anything else. This is the only thing. And then you don't know what to do. Some, uh, you know, defects come in and then you scratch your head for it. You don't know what to do. You're confused. You know, that kind of a crisis happens most lot of times, isn't it? Then another thing why what it is is Arjuna. Arjuna was also an ambitious person. He was a man of action. Right? Where you can, I think, whoever knows a little bit of Mahabharata will be able to identify with Arjuna's character. So in the midst of worldly problems, he was not like, okay, uh, you know, leaving everything. He was not in a Vairagya mode and, you know, leaving everything and uh, trying to understand. Uh, but here, he was an ambitious man. He wanted to fight. He wanted to rule. He had all those things. He had that Rajasik Guna in him. We are also like that. You know, that, you know, we, we want to up our career. Uh, we want to get promotions. We want to get hikes. We want our children to study well. And everywhere there is ambitious for us. May not be only for our own thing, but we are also ambitious about our own children, about our spouses, everything, about our siblings. We are always in a in that kind of a mode we are in. So, and you see, when Arjuna he feels dejected, when we get dejected, yeah, we we feel honored. He also feels honored. He feels insulted. We also get insulted. Okay, so if you we have certain likes and dislikes. He also has certain likes and dislikes. He also gets frustrated, like the way we get frustrated. So if you look at it, all these things, whether it's confusion or happiness, joy, irritation, rebellious, we all can connect with Arjuna. That way. Then, so that's why we can also say that Gita is for the ordinary mass, like people you and me. That's how Bhagavad Gita. Now, one more thing is when we say teachings or learnings, right? What comes to our mind is basically uh, a guru sitting under a people tree, uh, so children, uh, students are sitting down, and then we are listening to a guru, and the guru gives all his uh, learnings to knowledge to the students, isn't it? That's how you get an impression. But here, the entire teaching of Bhagavad Gita is happening in the middle of a battlefield. Yeah. So, and why? Uh, if you look at it, Mahabharata war, the Kurukshetra war, isn't that kind of a war happening between us, within us also all the time? Not between us, within us. Now, how we'll, we'll just look into that. See, there were two parties, right? The Kauravas on one side, the Pandavas on the other side. Now, we, we are not fighting, we don't have anything, we can tell that, but this Kaurava and Pandava is happening within us also. I'll tell you how. So these Kauravas uh, and Pandavas, they, all, they both had their own share of uh, mistakes. They had their own uh, imperfections. Okay, They uh, had their own weaknesses. But the inherent quality of Kauravas was wickedness and the inherent quality of Pandavas was goodness. 
Okay, so that was the difference. Now I'll tell you how it can connect it. Wait. So one when that when a situation came, when that war situation came, and when both knew that we're going to fight, both of them approached Krishna. Both of them were there at the same time, in fact. Uh, so Krishna was uh, lying down, he was resting, and uh, deliberately he had closed his eyes. So first Duryodhana enters. Duryodhana enters and he comes and sits. And then uh, uh, after some time he'll think, why should I sit near his leg? I'm not going to sit near his leg. And he'll go and sit near his head. Okay, In the same court. Then Arjuna comes in and Arjuna says, Arjuna sees and then anyway, he, he wouldn't have sat there. He sat near the foot. So when a person is lying down like this, and then when they open their eyes, whom do they see first? They don't see a person who's standing behind, sitting behind. They see a person who is sitting in front of you. First thing is he saw Arjuna. Oh, Arjuna, how come we are here? What do you want? So then Duryodhana said, I came first. You need to tell me. I came first. So you need to first attend to me. Then he says, okay, fine. What do you want? Then he says, I, I need help for the war. So then uh, Krishna says, since both of you, and he laughed Karjuna, what have you come for? He says, same thing. So then he says, okay, let's do one thing. We, I have two things. One is, I will give the entire army to one party. And, this, and I'll give, I will be on the other side. And I will also make sure that I'm not going to take any weapons. I'm not going to fight, but I'll just be, I'll just be there. So you people need to choose which one of it I want. Sorry, we, uh, we, you people want. So uh, Duryodhana said, I'm going to choose first because, you know, he wanted to choose first. He says, okay. Then he said, I want the army. So, uh, in fact, Arjuna was very satisfied and he was very happy because somewhere he was feeling that if at all Duryodhana asks for Krishna, then we are going to fail. So, he was very happy that Krishna was on their side. So, though they, uh, so what I hear, what we have to see is we have to look at our own self. Do we have within us both evil and good, the Kaurava and the Pandava, both as they are in both things? We, can we say that we are always good for everything that we're doing? We're doing good only? No, sometimes we, we do have some evil thoughts or negative thoughts coming into us, isn't it? And, but we are, are we always thinking negative in our life? No, that also does not happen. Right? So, we have this Kaurava Pandava war happening within us only. So, that is another reason why Bhagavad Gita will help us to understand this, you know, the fight between Kaurava and Pandava within us and how we can resolve. Yeah. So, wickedness inside will have always a war with the goodness inside. Always these two are fighting. But if the goodness is not ready to give up, hold on and surrender to the God ultimate, completely surrendering, Ishwara Pranidhana, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, is one sutra called as Ishwara Pranidhana. It is we completely. So in all, uh, in all, see, so there are, uh, you know, whether it is um, Uttamadhikari, Madhyamadhikari or Adhamadhikari. It is, there are again three things. Okay, let me just explain that to you. Adhamadhikari is one who, no, who haven't started to really understand about God. Okay, so this, he, he's like, it's okay. You know, maybe at some other time. And Madhyamadhikari is one who has known but not fully known God. I'm not talking about enlightenment here. I'm talking about how much we are, we are able to surrender. Maybe he just does puja occasionally. Uh, he, he knows about God but he doesn't want to completely surrender to God. Okay. And then there is Uttamadhikari who is completely surrendered to God. But if you look at it in all these three the major component that each one should have is, you know, that Ishwara is there in all these components. Maybe in the 
adhimadikari it is just there you know it is there and not there kind and in madhyamadikari also it is there a little 50% here and there and in uttamadikari full 100% but on all the three ishvara exists okay so ishvara pranidhana if we are able to surrender to the god and hold on to that goodness firmly then we can win over the badness we can we win over the kauravas in us so in all these aspects we can understand that gita studying gita will help us to transform our lives for the better yeah so now when uh, problems come what should be done definitely we need to find solution but what is the practical way how do we approach problems first we try to escape from the problem yeah can we relate to that whenever there is a challenge coming the first thing that we see is how can i escape from it and that that's a natural tendency okay so what did arjuna do when he faced when he came, got a problem he tried to escape isn't it he said krishna please take me away from here right so our non acceptance is only increasing our fear we are not ready to face it and it will only increase the fear which is there in us okay so uh, if you've seen you know why do people uh, you must have seen in movies also and probably is happening even in our real life whenever somebody has a problem the first thing that day is they go and drink alcohol yeah what is that alcohol trying to do it is just helping them to escape from that problem for that particular time in fact the next day when they get up they have the problem also they have also one more thing added to it the hangover so both comes so we the first thing we want to escape somehow later we'll see today i will escape tomorrow if it comes we will see that kind of a thing that we all go through isn't it <coughs> so we don't want to face the problem that's one route the other route is to change we want to change the situation hmm? but do you think it will uh, just leave it will come back maybe today we'll try to change it tomorrow it will again come back or within in another few days it will again come back sometimes it will come in a modified way and grab us more and it can probably be the intensity also will probably increase there we keep struggling we we will if we even we try to change we will keep struggling all the time okay the next one is to suffer okay okay i'm not escaping i'm not changing but we'll suffer that is also not good you curse complain suffer but you don't face it okay and then what we do we blame so many people around us we blame all the external factors for the problem that we are in we blame first thing my fate this is the problem i don't my destiny is like that i don't have any luck that's why i'm having problems then the society is not good yeah they don't care a lot of things which is happening in the society is not good that's why i'm having this or my parents that's the way they brought me up yeah it is because of my parents that i am like this then we tell them we blame the parents or we blame our children they didn't take care of us they went away they are not bothered about me i i did so much for them and then they just went on their own we blame the children then we blame our neighbors yeah they keep shouting i don't have any peace of mind because of them all that we said then if not anything else there is one person whom we can definitely people blame it we just look up and say it's a he he is the problem it is because of him only i am like this i did so much of puja i did so many archanas pushpanjali i did this homa that homa all that i did and then what did he do he didn't do anything that is what we tell isn't it so we convert it into a suffering and we keep cribbing about it all so that only intensifies that attitude no it will only intensify the suffering it is the problem is still remaining doesn't get solved so 
none of these three whether it is escape change or suffer none of these are the effective means to solve or face problems now look at the situation of arjuna he wanted to escape first thing that he did was that no he wanted to run away but did krishna help him escape he was a charioteer no he could have just driven off the chariot but no he did not did he change the situation he his god he he is also the cousin you know right krishna and arjuna are related also yeah kunti's nephew is krishna so and more than cousin he was also very close to arjuna he was a close dear friend to arjuna so he could have changed it could have done something god he had the powers also no we did so even when we ask god we what do we normally ask when we pray to god to change the situation we don't we are not then he doesn't change the situation and then we scold him right so what actually is that god has nothing to do with that he is not going to change the situation next is he after that he tried to he said that you know my hands are trembling my legs are shaking uh, i'm not able to hold my bow i'm not hold, able to hold the arrow he was completely devastated he was trying to suffer for that so but nothing of this krishna was able was trying to change he said i will not change the situation for you okay it is your situation it is your challenge you handle it okay but i will empower you i will give you i'll give you the necessary knowledge to you so that you transform your thinking i'm not going to do anything no magic comes out of my hand only thing is i will give you the knowledge so that you use it you apply it and then you get transformed so here also in our life also sometimes we don't don't try to change the situation but face it and see how you can handle the situation how we will go through it as and when we go through different versus different chapters so we face life build and live life that is what geeta will help us to do it will guide us into these all these new new situations which comes in how do we approach it gracefully and joyfully if you can take the example of uh, the three brothers dhritarashtra pandu vidura i'm not going to get into the story of it as to how they are brothers and all that thing okay so i think you can you know maybe uh, if you don't know do some research you'll find it okay so the three brothers dhritarashtra who was born blind yeah pandu he had some skin uh, diseases he had leukoderma he, he was very pale and vidura had no issues so though they were three brothers the same father they were so dhritarashtra is always bit up is more in the tamasic guna he did not face he did not build he did not make his life always complaining this is not right i couldn't my i became blind because of it i couldn't become the king pandu became the king after that i got dead but i'm always uh you know feeling when he will come back and take away my uh, take away the throne so you know he was always complaining pandu was you know he was better and bitter sometimes he was bitter sometimes he was better he faced the situation but he didn't build he didn't try to transform but no complaints and vidura better he faced it and he built his life he knew what he want he had to do in his life so he was feeling bad for whatever things were happening to his brothers and to his brothers children but vidura as such he was not affected by any of it internally he was not affected. so how do we study geeta how do we approach geeta now here in geeta geeta a lot of uh, messages are very miss a lot of these verses we misunderstand it very easily so we say uh, you know people talk telling that krishna has brought in caste system because he talks about varnas that we don't we without really understanding the whole thing we say krishna brought in caste system into us into our society that's not what it is and 
Now he also says main thing, work, okay, without reaping its results. Don't look at the results. Both are wrong, or many more things are wrong. What we have understood is what not what is what is not right. The understanding is not right. There is no problem with the verses. He never tried to uh, differentiate. Did not have any caste system. Okay, he did not say that you know don't look at the results. The way we have to look at it is very different. So we need to study Gita in a very uh, proper manner, not to get misled by these kind of commentaries. So we need to be really looking at the right uh, understanding, right knowledge, what Bhagavad Gita wants to give. So study it under the right guidance is what um, the uh, introduction is telling us. Okay. So a deep study. So what, you know, if you remember, I give you uh, certain questions was put in the WhatsApp group for you to reflect upon, right? Please join the WhatsApp group, those who haven't joined, because we'll, we'll have a lot of questions to reflect upon certain things, how we can apply it in our lives in the form of questions, okay? So you can do that. So Gita has to be studied not by just chanting or memorizing it. Gita has to be chanted in three different ways. You know how we have to do it? We have to do, first is do Shravanam. Listen. Listen with not just two years. How many ever years you can have? Try to listen fully what has been told. Next is Manana. Reflect upon it. Oh, so it, it, like I'm telling something. Don't just take it at face value. Okay? So reflect on it. See, what is what is it? What is these verse telling? What is the meaning of it? How can I uh, reflect on? How, how do I understand it? So understand it fully, reflect on it. Not enough. Third is the most important step, Nididhyasana. Assimilating, applying it in our life. We listen, we reflect and leave it. Then transformation will not happen. Listen, reflect and assimilate. Only then we can move forward. So this is the way we need to be looking at. And how do we look, how do we see the characteristics of a good student also uh, Gita talks about. Yeah, in in many verses in, there in the second chapter, tenth chapter, eleventh chapter, many verses um, Bhagavad Gita talks about how a, what are the characteristics of a good student. Yeah, One is approaching the teacher with humility. We'll go through the verses that then we'll go more detailed. Okay. Eagerness to learn. Okay, okay. So if it is coming, let it come. Not with that attitude. I want to know that that you know that zeal, that energy has to be has to come from within. I want to learn. I want to understand it. Then faith. Faith in these words. So without that, now it's like this. Now a doctor gives you a medicine. Only if I have that faith that this medicine is going to cure my problem, only then it works actually. See, we take the tablet and say, this tablet is not going to work. This tablet is not going to work. And then you have it. Your illness will not be cured. It will still remain. So just by having an external medicine is not enough. But we need also need to have the faith that this medicine will help me out. Similarly, when we read, when we understand this text, when we learn this text, have faith that it's going to transform our lives. Okay? Then, Gita tells what is good and right for us. Right, which the ultimate right or the ultimate good. See, sometimes what is good for me may not be good for you. Yeah, I, whatever I say that, okay, this is something which you have to do, then you will say, no, 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 this doesn't work for me. But in Gita, everything is right and good for everyone. It's applicable for everybody. It's not for, you know, specific. It's not unique to each one. It is for all. Okay. So, and it tells what is the right thing to do. It may not be very pleasant for us to do, but it is the right. Okay. Then listening attentively. We need to listen. You know, that's the main problem with us. With, the, with all of us here, we listen, we do not listen fully. We do not give 100% when we are listening. 
little here and there, we get distracted, we listen half and half, and we form our own opinions. That shouldn't happen. And asking intelligent questions, clearing the doubts, and reflecting on the teachings. So here again, the WhatsApp group is also created because of that. So that if you have any questions, post it so that you get the clarity. Don't be with that thing, okay? Or maybe in the next uh, few uh, you know classes, it, it will be covered. Don't think like that. If you have any question, post it. If it is something which will be covered, I will tell you that it will be covered later. Okay? So ask questions, clear your doubts, and reflect on it, whatever is being taught. Okay? That will help us to go more forward faster. Okay? So we will start with Bhagavad Gita, the first chapter in the next class. The first chapter is Arjuna Vishada Yoga. Okay? That is what we will be doing. So, the first, um, the how Bhagavad Gita is divided is, the first to the sixth chapter talks more about Karma Yoga. Seventh to the twelfth chapter talks about Bhakti Yoga. And thirteenth to the eighteenth chapter talks about Jnana Yoga. That's how it is. It's not that Karma is not there in the others. Bhakti is not there in the first chapters. It's not that it is there. But the emphasis is more in the, so it has been divided, Karma Yoga in the first six chapters, the next six is talking about Bhakti Yoga, and then the last six is talking about the Jnana Yoga. So we will start with Karma Yoga, Arjuna Vishada Yoga in the next class. Okay. Till then, take care, study, reflect, and we will meet in the next class. Oh. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Krishna Arpanamastu